Hey guys, what's going on? I hope you all are doing well today. Elliot here and welcome back to the Fragrance Well. So we're gonna talk about what has got to be easily one of the most popular fragrance notes in perfumery. Men, women, doesn't matter. Uh, everybody tends to have at least one vanilla fragrance that they really like. So we're gonna talk about vanilla scents today. I'm gonna give off what I consider to be 10 of my best vanilla fragrances in my collection. A little bit of a caveat though, they're not necessarily all vanilla centric fragrances. These are all fragrances where I say at a minimum, vanilla plays an important role in the makeup of the scent DNA. There are a few here that vanilla is definitely a feature note and note, note and some of them uh, vanilla is in the fragrance, but it may not necessarily be the feature, but I think the fragrance would not work the same if it did not have that vanilla in it. So 10 of my best vanilla scents in my fragrance cabinet. As always, before we get started, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you do like the content and hit that bell icon and enable the notification so you can be notified when I upload new videos. Let's get into it. Okay, so this list is not ranked, so let's just go ahead and get into it. First up, from BDK Parfums, this is Gris Charnel Extrait. BDK Parfums, Gris Charnel Extrait. Little unrelated note, BDK just raised their prices, just FYI, but everybody's doing that. Anyway, this is uh, primarily a fig fragrance, or at least the Gris Charnel original DNA it was kind of focusing on fig. This has a uh, fig as well, also has some nice cardamom, has a little bit of a effervescence to it. There's also some tea accords, uh, some kind of dry woods, but there's also quite a bit of vanilla in this. There's a little bit of a boozy touch too, in my opinion, but lots of vanilla in this. You definitely notice it and pick it up throughout the entire scent, and it is one of my favorite facets of this fragrance. Beautiful wearing experience, has a nice cozy, uh, cozy richness to it, if you will. There is also some tonka bean in here, so vanilla is not the only thing kind of giving this fragrance its sweet element, but the vanilla definitely plays an important role here. I think the vanilla kind of stands out more so than the tonka bean does. So great vanilla scent, in my opinion, or at least a scent that does have vanilla in it that plays an important role in the scent DNA makeup. So once again, from BDK Parfums, this is Gris Charnel Extrait. Okay, next up from The Harmonist, we've got Hypnotizing Fire. The Harmonist, Hypnotizing Fire. So this fragrance is primarily spicy. Uh, opens up, very spicy. There's some floral notes in the heart of the fragrance, but one thing you definitely get right from Jump Street is you get some vanilla. <laughs> and there is a beautiful vanilla accord in here, certainly. Um, I would say the vanilla, the way it comes across in this fragrance is a little bit different than what you get from most vanilla scents. So I do think that gives it high nods because obviously there's tons of fragrances that have vanilla in them. But I think this one, uh, the way the vanilla comes across mixing with the benzoin and the apopinax that is in the base of this fragrance truly makes it special. Wonderful fragrance experience, very powerful scent, lasts a long time, projects very nicely and the vanilla definitely is important in the makeup of the DNA of this fragrance. So once again, from The Harmonist, we've got Hypnotizing Fire. All right, next up from the house of Mason Francis Kirk John, this is Grand Soir. Mason Francis Kirk John's Grand Soir. Now this fragrance is vanilla centric. This is a vanilla scent in my opinion. There are other facets to it. It's also quite resinous, kind of has a stickiness to it just the touch of spice on the top. There is also some tonka bean adding to the sweetness of this. But one thing's for sure, vanilla plays an important role in this fragrance. I think that's part of the reason why it is so popular and so good. And also I know for me, when I get way into the dry down, I'm talking about the fragrance has been on your skin for like 10 plus hours or so, because it does last that long, at least it does for me. All I can smell at that point is vanilla. I don't get anything else, it just smells like raw vanilla oil on my skin and it is a lovely vanilla smell indeed. So great vanilla scent here for sure. Uh, in my opinion, always gonna kind of be at the top of the list of great vanilla centric fragrances. So once again, from Mason Francis Kirk John, this is Grand Soir. All right, next one is from the house of Arabian Oud and this is Madawi Gold Edition. Arabian Oud, Madawi Gold Edition. Now this fragrance is not vanilla centric. Uh, it is pineapple and red fruits centric, in my opinion. 
but there is a lot of sweetness to this fragrance and vanilla is a part of that makeup. There's also a lot of tonka bean in this, but I think the vanilla still plays an important role in the sweet makeup of this, of this fragrance. And the sweetness of this is definitely what gives it its allure. It is a very juicy pineapple fragrance. The red fruits kind of gives it a little bit of a pop to it. it. has a little bit of an effervescence, but it's very syrupy in nature as well. Very syrupy pineapple fragrance. You can kind of compare it to Kajal's Lamar, but where Lamar is a little bit more bright and effervescent and airy, this one is rich and dense and syrupy. And again, the vanilla is not the main focus of this fragrance, but the vanilla in here definitely plays a part in how this fragrance comes across. So I think it deserves to be on my best list for fragrances that feature vanilla in some way. So once again, from the house of Arabian Oud, this is Madawi Gold Edition. Next one is from the house of Dior. This is Fahrenheit Parfum. Dior Fahrenheit Parfum. Now the original Fahrenheit DNA was all about the violet leaf and the leather and the spices. Now this still has that, but the uh, petrol vibe you sometimes get from violet leaf has been turned down quite a bit. Still has the spices, definitely still has the leathery aspects, but they added a ton of vanilla to this to give it a sweeter, more alluring aspect. Uh, kind of balance it out a bit. There is a boozy touch to it as well. Still has the smoky woody facet to it, but man, the vanilla in this is probably what makes this so popular, probably what makes this uh, more acceptable by a lot of people. I know that Fahrenheit DNA, you kind of got to be a fan of something like that. Not everybody really likes that, but more people are definitely guaranteed to like this, and it's because of the vanilla that's in here. Definitely deserves to be on that list because this one Definitely uh, for the modern audiences popularized Fahrenheit over what the original could not do with the modern fragrance collector. So once again, from the house of Dior, this is Fahrenheit Parfum. Next up from the house of Lorenzo Pazaglia, we've got Vampirum. Lorenzo Pazaglia Vampirum. Now this is vanilla centric. This fragrance is all about the vanilla. Rum and vanilla and the uh, supporting main accords are white blossoms and patchouli. So it's a very dark but boozy vanilla fragrance, but still has the sweet aspect. Not overly sweet, a little bit more of a natural vanilla smell without a bunch of added sugar, so to speak, but it's still a lovely vanilla scent and it's undeniable. And uh, if you haven't gotten your nose on this yet, I still think it's one you should sample if you are a fan of fragrances like Initio um, Side Effect. I personally don't care for side effect that much. I find it to be a little bit boring and it's a little overly sweet for me. If you want something a little bit more tamed down, a little bit more mature smelling, this might be one worth checking out just FYI. But this is a great vanilla scent, definitely one of the top ones in my fragrance cabinet. So once again, from Lorenzo Pazaglia, this is Vampiro. All right, next one's from the house of Parfums de Marley. This is Herod. Parfums de Marley, Herod. Now, this is still, in my opinion, one of the best vanilla and tobacco combinations on the market. Also, I love the use of the cinnamon in there. A Little bit of a smoky tobacco, beautiful spices coming primarily from that cinnamon that's used in this. And of course, there is vanilla giving way to most of the sweet elements that this fragrance has. I think this fragrance is masterful. I understand that some people complain about newer formulations not lasting that long. Frankly, I don't care as it pertains to this video because does it still smell the same? Uh, I can't speak to it myself, but all I know is whatever version I got, this still smells lovely. And uh, ones that I've picked up and smelled in stores that, you know, I've haven't bought because I kind of already have it, but I just wanted to smell it because it was there. Still smells great to me then too. And I still get the lovely vanilla tobacco spice combination that this fragrance is great for. So as far as I'm concerned, it's still a great vanilla scent. It doesn't need to last all day to, for it to be a vanilla scent. If that's your experience, I'm sorry to hear that, but that's not my focus for this video, but this is still gotta be on my best uh, 10 vanilla fragrances until I don't know if anything can dethrone this. This is masterful. So once again, from the house of Parfums de Marley, this is Herod. All right, next up from the house of Victor and Rolf, this is Spice Bomb Extreme. Victor and Rolf, Spice Bomb Extreme. Now, I haven't worn this in a while, and to be honest, I haven't sprayed it in a while, I'm gonna give it a spray. Uh, to be honest, I don't really wear it that much anymore, but what I do know is I still very much enjoy how the vanilla and the spice of this one comes together. Uh, compared to the 
original spice bomb, the addition of vanilla was one of the main things to differentiate this from the original spice bomb and actually tame it down a bit in terms of its spiciness. And I think they did a masterful job with this. And I do remember the number of times that I did wear this fragrance. I always really enjoyed how the vanilla came across. I almost feel like the fragrance is like a vanilla flavored um, whipped cream with spices all over it or something. That's kind of the picture I have in my head. Because I know this is slightly gourmand, but not quite fully in my opinion. But all I know is I really enjoyed the way the vanilla comes across in this scent. So therefore, it's going to make it onto my best 10 vanilla fragrances, even if it's one I don't really wear that much anymore. So once again, from Victor and Rolf, this is Spice Bomb Extreme. All right, next one's from the house of Nishane. This is Ani. Nishane, Ani. So I imagine those who are familiar with this scent probably are not surprised by this selection. Now this is a another vanilla centric fragrance. However, there are supporting accords, supporting notes. There's some, a little bit of spice and there's some green like accords blending with the spice and a little bit of a floral touch as well, but it is overwhelmingly vanilla. Now I've talked about how when I first got this fragrance, I wasn't really sure about it. I was kind of on the fence about it. And over time I have definitely warmed up to it. But one thing I can say about it, even from Jump Street was that I could tell that this was a quality vanilla. It was more so the other aspects of the fragrance I kind of had to get used to for whatever reason. I'm not really sure, but it just didn't sit with me that well when I first got it. But now it's uh, definitely a solid one in my collection. And the way the vanilla is used in this is masterful. It's very appealing. Uh, definitely comes across a lot differently than what you find in your typical vanilla scent. So I always can appreciate that. And it comes across in a way that I like. There is a style of vanilla I don't like, but obviously I'm not going to feature those in this video. But yeah, great masterful vanilla use in this fragrance. So once again, from the house of Nishane, this is Ani. All right, and the final fragrance for this list from the house of Amwaj, this is Boundless. Amwaj Boundless. So, this one, um, I wouldn't call it vanilla centric, but it does feature vanilla very strongly. Now it opens up quite spicy on my skin. Uh, there's some cardamom, some ginger, uh, CO2, some blood orange. Uh, in the heart of the fragrance, you got a couple varieties of bourbon vanilla mixing with some benzoin. And all I can say is when it gets to that point of the fragrance, the vanilla experience is lovely. I really do enjoy it. At the base of the fragrance, it's more incense -y, woody, slightly resinous and uh, with a very oriental touch to it. But the vanilla still sticks around even when you get to the base, even if it's not at the forefront once you get to the full dry down in my opinion. But uh, even on the atomizer, uh, I can pick up the vanilla and it is masterful, it is lovely. Definitely, again, uh, presenting the vanilla in a way that's a little bit different from your average vanilla scent, which I really do appreciate. But this has great vanilla in it. So once again, from the House of Amwaj, this is Boundless. All right, guys, that is gonna do it for this video. Please leave down in the comments below what are some of your favorite vanilla fragrances. I imagine most of you are definitely fans of vanilla in some shape or fashion. If you are not a fan of vanilla fragrances, please share why, because that is definitely going to be very rare in the fragrance world, whether you're a collector or not. So I appreciate you guys watching all the way into the end. Please remember to be well and smell well, and I will see you in the next episode of The Fragrance Well. Have a good one.